Ross! Did you go into work on your day off again? Man, you gotta be kidding me. Are the wages at your crummy factory job really that bad? So you gotta keep going in when you should be at home chilling? <laughs> Sucks to be you. <laughs> I, on the other hand, am a manager at a world-famous major company. Respected and admired by all. I'm so grateful I went to college. Best decision of my life! It's a weird feeling to be so far ahead of my big brother in life, but I guess you get out what you put in, huh? If we're honest, you were basically screwed the moment you decided not to go to college. I mean, who does that these days? Yep, it's factory life for you, now and forever! Hi, Eric. I see you're being as unpleasant as humanly possible, just like always. And I'll mint your words, huh? Things are crazy busy right now because we're going through the busiest period of the year. That's the only reason that came in on my day off. Nothing to do with needing the money. I wanted to help. We may be a small town factory, but things have been going really well ever since we landed the patent on those new medical devices. Our brand's becoming more well known by the day. My salary's not exactly shabby. <laughs> I see! <laughs> anyway, where do you think the money to put you through college came from in the first place? Anything it fell from the sky? I thought it came from the insurance money from when mom and dad died in the car accident. How many times are you going to ask me the same crap? Until you understand it, which sadly seems like it could take a while. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you the payout from the crash wasn't that big? I tried showing you the insurance documents so it'd finally go into that thick skull of yours. But you didn't even seem interested in looking. This is why you're poor, big bro. Because you waste all your time doing useless stuff. Looking at a bunch of old documents isn't going to make me rich. And it's not going to magically turn you into a college grad. That's not the point. You're right. This boring crap ain't why I messaged you in the first place. Huh? Did you actually want to talk about something? Alright, so listen to this. You ready to be surprised? Me and Sandra? We're getting married! Oh, wait, what? That Sandra? You mean the Sandra from our class at school? The one who people used to say was unobtainable? And out of everyone's league? Yep. That's her. So you know her then? Even though you're 10 years younger than me. That's weird. One of my classmates in middle school is related to her. I don't know her myself, though. Hmm. I see. Well, if you know her, this should go a lot quicker than I expected. Did you know that her family are the biggest landowners in town? And how it's basically said that they run the place? I had heard rumors. You know how things get around. I heard that her dad's the head of the family right now, but his health isn't what it used to be, so either Sandra or whoever Sandra marries is set to inherit the position and take over as Don. Is that right? Bingo! I managed to bag myself the daughter of the most powerful family in town! That's why I'm cutting you out of my life! Excuse me? I'm confused. How are we getting from A to B here? What? Think about it! Can you imagine how embarrassing it's going to be for me to explain to my rich new family that my big brother doesn't even have a college degree? Embarrassing? Living in poverty and destitution with you was also a big factor in my decision. I've been desperate to get away from all this, and away from you, for a long time now. That's why, as soon as I landed my job, I moved out and got my own place, alone. I just had to get some distance between us before I cracked up. <laughs> Living in poverty and destitution? Come on, Eric, that's not fair. Look, I know the period just after mom and dad died was rough, but things got better after that. I did my best to give you everything you needed. Nope. You're missing the point. I'm talking about way before that. Your life was an epic dud at the point you decided not to go to college. That's where me and you... We parted ways, even if we were still together physically. You know, the people you associate with in life are important. Right, bro? We influence each other, and I can't risk being influenced by a loser like you a second longer. My marriage to Sandra will be the beginning of my glamorous new life of celebrity and luxury. I'll be loved, admired, and adored by all. Signing autographs will be a daily occurrence. I can't wait! You're nothing but an eyesore getting in the way of my bright, promising future. Your very existence is jeopardizing my shot at true happiness. I see. I did kind of get the feeling you were looking down on me for a while now, but I had no idea you hated me this much. Back when Mom and Dad died when you were five, 
I did everything I possibly could to make sure you had everything you wanted. I wanted my little brother to be happy. I never asked for a foster dad, especially not one without a college degree. <laughs> this could have all been avoided if you just accepted Uncle Jim and his wife's offer to take me in. But you had to be stubborn and turn them down so you could play the hero, didn't you? This is all your fault! Huh? Uncle Jim? Are you still in contact with Uncle Jim? Why wouldn't I be? He's the only relative I have left. You make a big song and dance of being the one who got me through school and into college. But in reality, it was thanks to Dad's insurance money, wasn't it? And who told me all about that money? Uncle Jim. Huh? Is that why you believed everything he said and wouldn't even hear out what I had to say? I told you to stop speaking to him, Eric. All he's ever done is fill your head with convenient lies so he could manipulate you in his own ends when you grew up. How could you see what he's doing? That's why I refused his offer of taking you in. It was never about caring about you or wanting what was best for you. He's a greedy man whose only goal in life is lining his own pockets. You can say whatever you want. Pretty convenient how he's not here to defend himself, isn't it? It ain't gonna work with me, so you may as well stop wasting your breath. <laughs> I see. There was one more thing I wanted to discuss with you about where we go from here. But if you won't listen to a word I've got to say, it's probably a waste of time. Thank God you understand. It's not just me who thinks so. Uncle Jim said that I'd be better off if I ignored 99.999% of what you said to me. Because apparently you're a pathological liar. <laughs> now I'm set to marry into major wealth. I have literally zero need for you. So I figure I can finally cut you out of my life for good, like I've been wanting to do for a heckin' long time. <laughs> Fine, I get it. Goodbye. Disappear from my life forever, you poverty-stricken loser! <laughs> hey, Ross, you got a minute? Good evening, Ginny. How's it going? Is this about what we talked about before? No, it's about something else this time. Have you heard about your little brother's engagement? Huh? Oh, that. Sadly, yes, he was bragging about it a few days ago. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. You and Sandra are related, aren't you? I remember hearing that. Yep, you heard right. We're second cousins. Look, Ross, there's something I think you should know about this engagement. What is it? I'm just gonna come straight out with it, no matter how weird it might sound. Your little brother Eric's involved in a plot with your Uncle Jim and his wife. Huh? I happen to see Eric drinking with his friends at a local bar. I think he's a regular there. I've seen him a few times before, too, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, it seemed like he was celebrating something, and he got blind drunk. I don't make a habit of eavesdropping on people, but he was so loud I couldn't help it. He said some... things. I want to tell you everything, but I'd rather do it in person. Can we schedule a meet sometime? You're free tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, it's my day off tomorrow. I'll leave the time and place to you. All right, thanks, Ross. I'll message you tonight with the details as soon as I've decided on somewhere. Got it. Thanks for taking the time to meet today, Ross. Not at all. I should be the one thanking you. I'm so sorry for all the trouble my brother and uncle have caused you. You haven't done anything wrong, Ross. You don't need to apologize to me, but as for the matter at hand, it seems like the Three Stooges are preparing to put their little plan into action soon. Right. I'm gonna stick to my guns and keep my distance from them, just like I declared back then. There's nothing to gain from associating with people like that. Good idea. And I couldn't agree more. They're toxic through and through. I think it's for the best. That means we're gonna be speeding up that thing we discussed earlier, okay? Okay, got it. I'll make my preparations for moving ASAP. Ross! <coughs> you know something about this, don't you? Answer me! What do you want, Eric? I'm pretty sure I remember you cutting me out of your life. Why are you messaging me? I don't give a crap about that! Don't dodge the question, you chump! My fiancé dumped me because of you! Huh? You mean marriage with Sandra's off the table now? That's what I said, isn't it? Ah! I know you know something about this. Come out with it now. What did you do? Well, you knew it was a tradition in her family for daughters to get their whole inheritance when they marry, right? 
I wonder if her dumping you had something to do with finding out she had your sights on her money. What? Or could it be something to do with how you, Uncle Jim and his wife, were all conspiring behind their backs to use her money to prop up Uncle Jim's failing company? He's been in the red for years now. Everyone knows he's been desperate for someone to bail him out for ages. You realize from an early stage that if you could just worm your way into Sandra's family line of succession like the honorless slug you are, you'd have a shot at that money, right? Wait, how did you? They all seem pretty likely candidates as to why you're all alone. What do you think? What do I think? I think you're going to pay for this, you big idiot! Ah! Anyway, Sandra was going to be my wife. What the hell does what I was going to do with her money have to do with anyone else? Nothing! It would have been my property the moment we tied the knot! And there we have it, your true intentions. Huh? Or your true nature, I should say. I can't help but feel some responsibility for what a reprehensible scumbag you turned into, given I played a pretty major role in bringing you up since you were five. Where did I go wrong? Get off your high horse! I don't remember you being my dad! You're just some poverty-stricken loser who never gave me any money! You have no idea, huh? You still think your college expenses came from some magical never-ending insurance fund, don't you? Well, I've got news for you, boyo. What? It's the truth, isn't it? That's how I went to college! You'd have known this if you had any interest in your family. But even while mom and dad were still alive, our family never had much money. Huh? I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before, but mom and dad were employees at Uncle Jim's company. Had been there close to a decade at the time of the accident. But Uncle Jim, being the stand-up guy he is, used Dad's quiet, conflict-averse personality as an excuse to drop his salary as low as he possibly could. No one could never dare question it. The name on Dad's insurance policy wasn't mine or yours, but Uncle Jim's. What little savings Mom and Dad did have were blown on a huge, unnecessarily extravagant funeral by Uncle Jim. So he could point and say, look what I did, while bragging to everyone about what a great send-off had given them. That flashy funeral wasn't just paid for by mom and dad's savings either. He also borrowed from some of his friends and refused to pay them back afterwards, leaving them penniless. What the hell? Uncle Jim did all that stuff? If I was older and knew more about the world back then, I would have done whatever I could to stop him. But I was a middle school kid who just lost his parents in a horrific accident. I could barely even process what was going on, so I was in no position to do anything about him. He took everything. Insurance money, mom and dad's savings, and even stuff from his friends. Uncle Jim did that? That's not even the last of it. After that, I caught wind of his plan to take custody of me and you, so he could exploit us as free labor at his company one day, when we were old enough to start working. Knowing what he was like, I was sure that was his aim, and I was willing to stop at nothing to prevent him getting his way. It's taken everything by this point. There was no way I was going to let him turn us into slaves. But then you grew up, went out into the world, developed ideas and desires of your own, and, well, you did what you did. I was never going to be able to control you forever. And that's where we are now. How could this be? No. No. This can't be happening. This isn't the first time you've done something like this. The signs have always been there. Uh. I should have known back then when you looked down on me and wouldn't listen to a word I said. Even back then. And you know what? There was a part of me that had my suspicions, but I didn't accept my own little brother thought so little of me. I mean, who would? Wish I'd noticed sooner. But I deluded myself with a comforting lie. Ross! But you're an adult now. It's time for you to decide on your own what kind of life you want to live. For you to make your own mistakes and to suffer the consequences of them too. What? On my own? I won't be there to get you out of trouble anymore, Eric. Ross! Please! Ross! I got fired! Or rather, they're letting me jump on my own before they push me! I just found out that my company and Sandra's dad's company are just about to enter business negotiations to become long-term trading partners! My boss said it would be bad for the company to have someone like me around at such an important time! He basically said if I didn't resign, they'd fire me! I had no choice. I thought you'd come and help me, so I gave all the higher-ups a good verbal dressing down. I really gave him one form, then slammed my resignation papers down on the desk. But, Ross, where did you go? When I asked Mavis, the next-door neighbor, 
She said she saw you packing your things into a moving van over a week ago. She said you also resigned from the factory in town a few months ago. Like, what the hell? Is it true? You never told me that. Ross, please, I'm begging you. Where did you go? Please respond. Help me. My situation is desperate. I'll do anything. Ross. After everything that had happened, I decided it would be best for me and my little brother Eric to live apart and lead separate lives. By the way, while all of this had been going on, Ginny invited me to work at the company she and her friends from college had launched together. And with that, I switched jobs and became the head of their Seattle branch, where I played a major supporting role for Ginny. I'm super grateful for her. And honestly, she couldn't have invited me at a better time. I get reports on my brother from my old friends who still live in town from time to time. Apparently, things aren't going so well for him anymore. Last I heard, he was left with no choice but to move in with his Uncle Jim, whose true nature he was now fully aware of, and his wife in their cramped one-bedroom apartment. But Uncle Jim, being Uncle Jim, he was up to his ears in debt after his company finally went bankrupt of years of teetering on the edge. As anyone could have predicted, my little brother Eric was forced to clean up the mess by taking on the debt repayments. How does he come up with the money, you ask? By working four jobs, wow! Not only that, but he also owes Sandra a hefty sum in compensation for the attempted inheritance fraud they try to pull. So he's engaged in the struggle of his life with no light at the end of the tunnel. Do I feel sorry for him? Not one bit. Actions of consequences. And it's time for him to face them like a man. This is the life he chose. As for me, my efforts to forge out a new life for myself are well underway. And I plan to apply forethought and moderation in all things. I'll never be an Eric. And you shouldn't either. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.